Hey Cynthia, how's it going? I got your greenhouse design and I wanted to give you your quick review of your design so that you guys can proceed with your passive solar greenhouse construction project. So overall, I wanted to say that I'm really impressed with what you've done here, but I have a couple of small tweaks that I recommend based on your email and there may be additional tweaks um, you know, depending on what your context is, but it sounds to me like you're going to be building this greenhouse against the side of a garage. And so I've got a couple of um, tweaks to help you make that uh, a successful um, building project, essentially. So something to keep in mind, which we talk about in the Passive Solar Greenhouse Design course, is the importance of understanding vapor and how it's going to permeate through uh, the wall system and so making sure that you've taken that into account. Now it looks like you're going to be building at least part of this greenhouse out of concrete. Um, and so that should work. Um, but really thinking about where that intersection point uh, occurs between the greenhouse and the garage is important. So if you're gonna use a standard construction garage, um, you really have to understand how you're going to prevent that moisture from the greenhouse migrating into the wall system and causing mold potentially. You had a question as well about the R value and modeling the thermal dynamic losses in the in the garage, and that's going to uh, largely be based around the temperature that the garage is going to be maintained at. If you're going to have a heated garage, um, then it changes how the model looks at that. And I would say just model it with the assumption that the garage is not heated as a worst case scenario. Um, truthfully, the heating losses of a greenhouse in the wall system itself are fairly low relative to the glazing surfaces. So all that will do, it will, it will end up creating a little bit more of a conservative heat loss estimate um, in your greenhouse, which means that you'll size a slightly larger heating system if one is even required. Now with regards to the overall shape of the greenhouse, we're looking at it here on the screen and um, you've used a flat roof on the top of the greenhouse right here. Um, this concerns me just a little bit. If this is butted up against a garage, uh, likely you could potentially have some issues with water kind of moving down along the, the back side of the garage there. So you'd actually be better off to have um, an angled roof or just bring the glazing right back to the garage and have it tuck underneath any eave that you might have there. Um, if you do have an eave under the garage, then you can locate your vents underneath that eave as well, which will prevent you from uh, having any uh, leakage issues in that, um, in that vent. Um, one option is that you could actually create a, uh, a roof like you've got here and then put in operable skylights um, into that roof system for your ventilation, which will prevent you from having any um, water issues down the road with regards to that particular vent. I, uh, I really like all the cross vents that you've put into this greenhouse. I think you're going to really find that that's going to benefit the overall uh, ventilation and thermal dynamics of the greenhouse. Um, again, if you've watched all the material in the course, you're going to remember that ventilation is always the weakest link when it comes to greenhouse design. So these cross vents are going to be really valuable for you. Um, I've already said it, but just looking at where these vents are, if, if they're not covered by an overhang on top of it, um, they can potentially cause... Um, drip issues in the greenhouse. So you're going to want to think a little bit about that, which is why I suggested changing the angle of this roof uh, to slope to the south and then using operable uh, skylights is probably a good option. Um, I'm struggling to understand some of the dimensions you have here. Um, so you've got a three foot uh, high knee wall. That looks great. Um, and then six foot total height on the front of the greenhouse. Um, and what you're saying or suggesting here is that your uh, uh, vents, your lower vents are four by six feet um, in the bottom here, but I think there's a dimensional issue. So if this is three feet and the total is six, then um, there's going to be a dimensional issue here. So likely this is going to be um, two foot, uh, two by two foot potentially uh, vents on the lower side here. If you do want to stick with the larger vent, which is fantastic, then... Um, you may just have to change some of the, the front dimensions of this particular greenhouse here. Uh, other than that, um, really impressed with what you've done here. Um, the concrete might be 
a uh, really expensive option that you could potentially look at changing as far as uh, building material. I'm not sure if you're planning on using an insulated concrete form there, um, but uh, I'm sure you've thought long and hard about why you've chosen that material. If you do end up using a concrete wall and it's not made with insulated concrete forms, then you may want to clad it with an exterior insulated facade system, which is basically just polystyrene foam that you adhere to the outside of that concrete. And then you would place some sort of a siding or protective membrane on the outside of that insulation as well. So I wanted to personally thank you for sending me your design. And uh, I hope that uh, this, this information has helped you to kind of fine tune your design. Um, please send us photos if you end up building this. I think it'll be a really great greenhouse to feature on one of our upcoming um, case study videos. I think that uh, other students would get a lot out of it and I'd love to see how it performs for you. Thanks so much guys. If you found this video interesting, give me a like. Uh, it helps the video to track. And if you're looking to design your own passive solar greenhouse, we have a, a year round self-study passive solar greenhouse design course that you can participate in. If you're just new to passive solar greenhouses, you can check out our free introduction to passive solar greenhouse design. And I'll put a link to both of those in the show notes below. Um, passive solar greenhouses are just an incredible space um, one of the things that has really struck me as of late is that with all of the extreme temperatures that we have been receiving globally, um, these greenhouses are really uh, suited to climate change adaptation and ensuring that you get a crop no matter what the weather does. Um, there are also wonderful spaces to hang out in the winter if you suffer from seasonal affective disorder. Um, and you can do all sorts of really cool things inside of them, like um, placing hot tubs and saunas. You can grow subtropicals or Mediterranean plants that normally wouldn't grow in your ecosystem. And you can extend the season so that you've got a supply of fresh vegetables no matter uh, what time of year. One of the coolest applications of these greenhouses that I've seen uh, is the use uh, within the urban farming ecosystem which allows people to produce greens 12 months of the year. So thanks so much for watching this, guys. I hope that you found that useful. If you have any questions about passive solar greenhouses, leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.